All right, so we're going to head into the second part of section 3.6, our, our critical points, um, our max mins, our points of inflection, and go through the process that we're going to use to actually uh, graph these functions. What we're going to do is we're going to jump into what's called a derivative. Um, we're going to find our first derivative of a function. And how we go about doing that, if you notice with this, is that I'm going to take my coefficient, and I'm going to take that times my exponent. Okay, so in this first example down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 6 times the 3, and that's going to give me 18. Okay. The second piece then will be that my variable, its power goes from n to n minus 1, or in other words, what we're doing is reducing my degree by 1. Oops, sorry, should be second. And we just continue that process. So I go on to my next piece. 2 times 2, reduced by 1. Okay. Negative 8 times 1. Okay. Now if I reduce it by 1 degree, I get x to the 0. And if you recall again, x to the 0 is equal to 1. Okay. So I really don't even need to write that. And that's going to be true that whenever we take the derivative of a linear term, it's going to be equal to our coefficient of that linear piece. Okay. Now if I move on to this last piece, same way, this is x to the 0 here. We can put a variable with there and to the 0 power, because again that's 1. When I take 6 times 0, I get 0. So the next piece is that a derivative of a constant is going to be equal to 0. Right. So now when we go to our second derivative, all we're going to do is take the derivative of the first derivative. So same idea, 18 times 2, reduce it. Plus 4, because of the fact that it is a linear piece, so the derivative of that is just your coefficient. How this is going to help us? is that our first derivative is going to help us find our maximum and our minimum values, okay, our max and mins. Okay, so that's our places where we're going to change direction again with my graph. The process that we're going to use, we're going to set that first derivative equal to 0 and solve it for x. And then what we're going to do is we'll take those values for x, plug them into my original function to find a point on my graph. The second derivative is going to help us find our point or points of inflection, okay. places where we're changing in terms of concavity. And the same process, set it equal to 0, solve it for x, and then again we're going to plug it into my original to find my point for my graph. All right, so if we look at an example of how we're going to go about doing this, number one, it asks you to find your first and second derivatives. So again, 2 times 3 reduced by 1. Again, it's that linear. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that expression, set it equal to 0, and here's why we had to factor, because again, what we want to do is look for a common piece to take out first. And then I have a difference of squares. Okay. And again, now I have my zero product property. And our zero product property, again, says when I have a product that's equal to zero, one of those parts has to be equal to zero. Okay. Now, obviously, six can't be equal to zero, but the other two give us the fact that x could be one and x could be negative one. Okay. Now, like I said, those are going to be values that are going to help us find our max and min values. Then we're going to take our second derivative. So 6 times 2 reduced by 1. Then I'm going to go over here and set that piece equal to 0, divide both sides by 12, and our point of inflection is going to be at 0 something. Okay. And lastly, we ask that you find your y-intercept. Again, y-intercept is your value for y when x equals 0. And so what you notice in this case, your point of inflection and your y-intercept are going to be the same point. And that will happen from time to time. 
The other thing is, is that this is going to always be your constant from your function. Okay, so my constant here is 4, so I now know two of the points on my graph. Now we're set to look at how I'm going to graph this. So like I said, we already have the one point at 0, 4. Okay, it's going to help us uh, plot this graph. What I also like to do is go back to that idea that we did in part A or part 1 about thinking about your end behavior. You have a third degree function here, so you're going to have one tail up, one tail down. And because of the fact that your leading coefficient is positive, I should overall have an increase, so I should get something that looks like that. Okay. Now, we're also going to have the calculator to help us. So what we're going to do with the calculator is you're going to type in your function. So 2x to the third minus 6x plus 4. And again, remember the idea if you don't see your graph, you can always go to your zoom, number 6, get to your standard window, negative 10 by 10 to 10, both the x and y. Notice again, that's what we expected was something that looks like this, which we did. All right, one more quick example. So again, start out, first derivative. All right. Set it equal to 0. And then we're going to solve it out. So I'm going to factor out a 3. And just like in our first example, again, I get that difference of squares. Okay, so I'll get x equal 1 or x equal negative 1. Second derivative. Set that equal to 0. And again, that's going to be my point of inflection. And again, it happens to be that that's also my y-intercept. Do not assume that every time your point of inflection is also your y-intercept. may not be. Okay. From there again, now what I want to do is use my tools, my calculator to help me again. So I'm going to get rid of the function that I have in there and type in my new one. So x to the third minus 3x plus 2. And again, I'm going to go with trace. And like I said, we'll start out at my y-intercept every time. So 0, 2. So I'm going to test negative 1, which is at 4. And that, as well, is a maximum. From there, I'll try 1, which is at 0, and as a minimum. And I'll sketch from my point of inflection, drawing a parabola through that minimum, then through that maximum. All right, good luck with this assignment.